This is Twit. Big news this morning involves a report released by Bloomberg that illustrates how Chinese spies reportedly have hacked their way into the supply chain of nearly 30 U.S. companies. And let's just say that's bad news on any given day, but particularly bad news in this modern era where there's already this thick fog of hesitation and suspicion uh, as relates to China and the U.S. Joining us to talk about this complicated story is Ian Thompson from The Register. Welcome back, Ian. Cool. Thanks very much for having me. It's been it's been an interesting morning, should we say that? <laughs> yeah, it really has been. It's one of those stories that kind of exploded on the scene this morning, and everybody's been chattering about it. Uh, and it's really hard to know what's real and what's not. So the report uh, by Bloomberg Business Week talks of a tiny microchip, like a, I mean, just absolutely tiny. There's a little picture of of the thing on a, on a finger uh, that was supposedly inserted into motherboards created by super micro computers. How big is super micro and like what is the reach of this tainted hardware um, from there and, and outward into other computers hardware? Well, server micro is about as big as it gets, to be honest. I mean, they're, when it comes to the amount of hardware they push out, it's huge. They've been certified by the U.S. government, so their systems can be used in by the intelligence community. Businesses are very pop, uh, are very happy with them because they'll offer you a whole, you know, hundreds of different configuration op uh, options for the hardware that you want. Get it built, get it shipped out, and they're seen as a very sort of reliable and. You know, no one ever got fired for buying Super Micro, at least not yet. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, yesterday and before, today and beyond, maybe a different story. Not so much. Yeah. <laughs> so what about the payload here? This is a chip that supposedly during the supply chain was was thrown onto these motherboards. Uh, there's got to be a, a reason for it uh, if they do so, you know, exist as Bloomberg says they do. What are they capable of? Well, it's it, it's the, the actual the actual chip itself very very small, about the size of a grain of rice they're saying. But it's where it was positioned on the motherboard. Basically, it was accessing the 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 baseband management systems. So, for example, on a server, you've got a you've got a BMC chip which allows the operator uh, of that server to remotely manage certain things without actually having to fire up or power down the server. So by inserting this in between that and the main server, you basically pwn the system completely. It's never going to be picked up by antivirus software. It's never going to be picked up by simple scanning. The only way you would pick it up is by physically examining the motherboard or by looking for suspicious network traffic coming from uh, a particular server, which is very, very difficult to do. I mean, one of the things that the Bloomberg said is that you know this chip is so small that the only way you can actually find it is by literally taking the motherboard out and going over it with a fine tooth comb, trying to find out exactly where it would be. But yeah, if you've actually got that installed in front of the BMC system, as far as security goes, it's game over. There is no security. Wow. Wow. Okay. So Super Micro, um, everybody's releasing statements. We'll talk about each of these statements. Super Micro released their statement today. Of course, they're refuting the story, uh, the, the accuracy of the story. Investors are hit, have been hitting the company hard. Uh, last I checked, which was like about an hour and a half ago, uh, the company's lost 40% of its value since the story oh, it's 46 broke. 46% last 40, time I checked. Dang, yes. Man, yeah, I know it was yeah. right around 50%. So it's fluctuating, but no matter how you slice it, pretty bad for Super Micro. Um, it, do you think their statement is just damage control or do you think, or what, do you, what do you think about that? Well, you see, this has been the key argument in the newsroom all day because, okay, when something like this breaks, like when we broke the Intel meltdown piece, we got very equivocal statements from Intel they were briefing other people behind uh, behind our backs saying, oh, you can't trust the register. Yeah, this, this is all rubbish. Um, but in this case, both Supermicro's case uh, uh, statement, Amazon's statement, and especially Apple's statement are totally unequivocal. Mm -hmm. You know, there is there is very few weasel words in there that they could use to get around. And that's what makes this, in a way, such a puzzling story because, you know, I know the Bloomberg journalists who've written this. They wouldn't put their name to it if they weren't sure it was true. Um, but that said, the complete and absolute denial by Supermicro, Apple and Amazon raises some serious questions because in issuing these statements, they will have had to have them checked by lawyers and for SEC compliance because they're all public companies. Now, if they're caught out, if, if these statements are untrue, as we've seen when Elon shot his mouth off last week, then you know the SEC is perfectly willing to fire people, leverage huge fines 
So if they are lying, it's an enormous risk. I mean, it makes Ford's choices over the Pinto look like just of a, oh, whatever. You know, I mean, <laughs> there are billions at stake on this one. So this is what makes, as I say, what makes it so so unusual in that, you know, we wouldn't usually hear this level of, of firm statement from a company if there was any, if they weren't absolutely sure that they weren't, you know, that they were in the right on this one. Yeah, I mean, that was that was my concern about this, too, is if, if they're all coming out so heavily against the details in the report. Let's just say that right now at this moment in time, there is a whole lot of uh, one person saying 100 percent unequivocally it's this and another person or a company saying 100 percent unequivocally it's this uh, it seems, you know, and it's not just in this story. It's in a whole other uh, sort of ways that we're seeing this happening right now. Maybe it's a strategy that works, but there is the risk of this SEC uh, you know, the, the risk of the SEC coming down on securities fraud with that, which would be, I mean, I, I couldn't see that as being a calculated risk that a company like Apple would be willing to take unless it was absolutely or confident. Or Amazon, I mean. Or Amazon, the, yeah, of course. The, yeah, the, the two largest companies, basically by dollar, by stock market value, pretty much in, you know, in the world, face would face huge financial penalties if they actually lied about this. And we've been going through those statements with a fine tooth comb, and there's not a lot of wiggle room in there. You know, barely more than a gnat's whisker. So, I mean, it's it, it would be okay. I would say it's not inconceivable, but it would be incredibly foolish. And I know these days lying is seen as no big deal in some parts of uh, some parts of government, but business usually takes it more seriously than that. And if you're outright lying to journalists, then you know that would be a very very expensive thing to do. However, important caveat. If it is, if this story is true, and this has been going on for three years, basically anybody who's used AWS over the last three years, anyone who's used Apple products over the last three years, and anyone who's bought from Supermicro over the last three years can't trust their machinery and will have to pull out and manually inspect motherboards. And that's going to lead to a massive financial cost to the companies involved as well. So, you know, they, if it's true, then they may have just decided – well, we're going to get hit anyway. We may as well lie and try and minimize the damages. But that seems to be a very, you know, suicidal one way to say yeah. way of going about it. Yeah, I, I, I would, uh, I would question whether they would actually make that calculated move. But hey, I guess I don't run Apple or Amazon. Who am I to judge? Well, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a cynic too, but I genuinely can't see Tim Cook doing something that no. stupid. He's not dumb. You know, no, definitely not. It's, it seems out of character. So then, l let's consider for a moment that it. It is true. I mean, I mean, well, I mean, the chip has been found, so we know the chip exists, right? So there's some legitimacy to this. It's just a question of whether Apple and Amazon knew about it ahead of time, right? Well, I mean, there's some questions. If you look at the Bloomberg story itself, I don't think it's actually explicitly confirmed that the chip they picture is the one that was got used it. in the attack. Um, and certainly from the images we've got, um, I've come across a mechanical engineer saying, well, hang on, that's only got three ports and you need two for power and two for data. Um, so it may just be that that was a mock-up of some kind. Um, if the chip has been found, I can't see a situation where the US government wouldn't investigate this to the fullest possible thing because they know about this. They're already scared about this. China produces 90% of the world's computers, 70% of the world's mobile phones. Having a hardware hack like this would be an enormous security concern. I mean, let's not. I mean, let's not deny it. The U.S. does this as well. If the Snowden archives are to believe, but the NSA's preferred tactic is if a suspect orders a computer, they'll then intercept it in transit, install their own kit on it, and then let it go. They don't go to the. They don't you know, work on the manufacturer's end. If China is working on the manufacturing end, then you see. Hardware hacks like this are great because they bypass all security things and they're very difficult to detect. But on the other hand, they do definitely leave a paper trail behind them. Yeah. Someone's got to physically put that chip on the board and there will be a record of that somewhere down the line. So it's also quite, you know, not too hard to actually attribute the attack to an individual or, or, or a particular subcontractor. Now, Bloomberg is saying that you know, they've identified three or four subcontractors of Supermicro where they say these chips came from. But... I don't know. There's something about this which is deeply, deeply disturbing in that you'd have to spam out an awful lot of these chips and monitor all these chips just to get to a useful server and not, you know, so an AWS server that's just doing some coders, uh, some coders GitHub projects. So, you know, if true, it's massive. 
Um, but it would take a massive coordinated campaign by the Chinese. Now, the thing of what we have learned about the Chinese government over the last 20 or 30 years is that they're willing to take large scale operations uh, with a long term payoff. So, you know, as always with these things, I'd like to see some more evidence. But at the moment, uh, it's looking as though, you know, if true, then this is a this is basically going to lead to huge numbers of companies having to rip and replace motherboards. Uh, if untrue, then two journalists have just ruined their professional careers. <sighs> yeah. Either way, not good. And either way, we will find out, um, I'm sure, because like sooner rather than later, because you better believe the folks, you know, at, at the big companies whose names are on the line, if this isn't true, are going to be very, you know, at the at the front of this uh, to squash oh, as fast as possible. So. But also law enforcement uh, yep. and you know and the and the government. I mean, Apple went so far as to say that they had not they were not operating under a gagging order. They hadn't right. gone to the FBI and other agencies, which you know, if this was the case, wouldn't be you know um, you know it, it, they wouldn't say that because that is easily refutable by the government. Yeah. Um, so this is what has us scratching our heads about this. What I mean, don't get me wrong; it's a great story, but. It could be that people have gotten on and got to the end of the wrong end of the stick, or it could be that we're looking at one of the biggest cover-ups in recent in recent decades. Yeah, no kidding. Ian Thompson, always great to get you on, man. Thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us uh, about this story and uh, kind of clarify it a little bit. I really appreciate it. Always fun, Jason. See all you right. soon. TheRegister.co.uk to follow all of Ian's work there. Thanks again, Ian.